Okay, chapter 11, lesson 5, appropriate measures, located on page 845. You can go get a drink if you have the hiccups. Take the pass so you don't get in trouble. All right, now we're going to go to the next page because we're a little short on time and I want to get into the definitions of a few things here. Using mean, median, and mode. Most appropriate. Now, this is about deciding when do you use which one of these M words to decide the uh, best measure of center or the best way to give an estimate about your data. So, let's look at this. The first one, mean. When do you use the mean, kids? When the data have no extreme values. Ex what's our word for extreme values? Outliers. If it has no outliers, no outliers, you use the mean. You got it, kids? Median. When would I use the median? When the data have extreme values. What's our word for extreme values? Outliers. When you have outliers, you're going to use the median. Okay? Okay, the data. The other thing, there are no big gaps in the middle of the data. Okay. And when would you use the mode? I'll be honest, you don't see it too often. When the data have many repeated numbers. When it has a whole lot of repeated numbers, um, then you would use the mode. Remember, the mode's the number that occurs the most. All right? So, now let's go look at number one. The table shows the number of metals won by the U.S. Which measure of center best represents the data? Then find the measure of center. Okay, so I'm looking at my data numbers here. Are there any outliers? Are there any numbers that look much bigger or much smaller? No. So we're going to use mean. Okay, it says since the data set has no extreme values, no outliers. On the test, they don't use the words extreme values. They use the word outliers, okay? Our numbers that are repeated, the mean would represent, would best represent the data. So they added them together, divide by five, and they'll say um, the average amount of uh, metals would be 104 and three-fifths metals. Any questions on that? Okay, let's look at example two. The table shows the water temperature over several days. Which measure of center best represents the data? Then find the measure. So let's look at it. 82, 82, 82, 82. Ooh. 85, 78, 81. Well, there are a whole lot of 82s, right? Since we have many 82s, it's more than half. When you have a value that's more than half of the data, you're going to use that to describe it. Says, so it says, in the set of data, there are no extreme values. There is a temperature repeated four times. So the mode 82 is the measure of center that best represents the data. Okay? Now let's look at letter A. The price of several DVDs are listed. $22.50, and $21.50. Which measure of center best represents the data? Justify your selection, then find the measure of center. Okay, are there any outliers in this data set, kids? No. So what do you recommend to use if there is no outlier? No. The mean. We're going to use the mean on this one. And um, when you add them all together and divide, I'm just going to give you the answer to that. It's going to be 21... You know what? It's not going to be the mean because look at this. One, 
two, three. You have three that are exactly the same, and that's about half of our data, isn't it? This one is almost the same as that, too. On this one, we're going to use the mode. Mode, and it's $21.95. $21.95. Okay, any questions on that? All right, the mode is a lot faster to do than the mean, isn't it? Okay, let's go to 847. Outliers and appropriate measures. Sometimes data sets contain outliers. Outliers are deviations. That means they change uh, from the majority of the data set. They're, they stick out. Uh, the outliers may affect the measure of center. We're going to see what that does. Let's look at number three. Identify the outlier in the data set. Well, it's really easy to see on this one. Which one is the outlier? 200. It's much larger, isn't it? Any questions on how to find an... Uh, it can be extremely high or extremely low. Now, in part four, we're going to learn how this affects it. How it, an outlier affects your data. It says, determine how the outlier affects the mean, median, and mode of the data. Okay, so we are finding the mean, and we're using this information here. Okay, so they added them all together, and they divide it by 7, and they must have rounded it because it's a wiggle line. When it's a wiggle line, it means they've rounded. So that's a 62. Your median, your middle number, well, let's put these in order. It is 20, two thirties, a 35, okay, 20, two thirties, a 35, a 50, a 70, and a 200, right? Okay, one, two, three, our median is 35, isn't it? And our mode is 30. Any questions on that? Okay. Now in the next data set, the mode is 30. We have two of them. Our median is 35. Now, in this one, they took out the outlier. What number did they take out in this grouping? They took out the 200. So when they took out the 200, look at what the mean is now. The mean is 39, whereas earlier it was 62. Now your median, well, if you have 20, 30, 30, 35, 50, and 70, your median is now going to be in between 30 and 35, right? You've got two middle numbers now, and that's going to be 32.5. And your mode stays the same. It's still 30, isn't it? Okay. Everyone see how that happens? Now, on your quiz tomorrow, it's going to say, um, how does taking an outlier affect each one of these? Okay, and we're going to add in the word range, too, because on the test they include the word range. All right, so when you have a really large number, does, it make your, does the outlier make your mean higher or lower? When you have a high outlier, is your mean higher or is it lower whenever you take the mean the outlier out. The mean is much higher with the outlier in this case, okay? Did it affect your median very much? The median was affected just a little bit, right? It was only affected about 2.5, correct? Could you write that down? And the mode, did it affect the mode? No effect, right? Now for the range, with the outlier, it's 200 minus 20. The range is 180. 
when you take the outlier out, 70 minus 20, the, it is now 50. So did it affect the range? It affected the range a lot, didn't it? Okay. Do you, do you see that? That should be easy to answer on the quiz tomorrow. This is what the quiz, it sort of looks like this. It, I tell you what the, the mean and the median and the mode are here. And then in this part, how does it affect the mean, median, mode, and range? How does it affect the mean? You can say it's a lot and try to say it, you know, it affected it by 30. The median, just a little bit. The mode did not affect. And the range, a lot. And then just give me the uh, how big the number is. Can you all do that tomorrow? Is that pretty easy? That's what that will want to do. That's, and kids, if you get these all right, I can grade your quizzes really, really, really fast. Okay? Any questions on that? Um, it's just one piece of paper. That's actually the test. It's a little longer, but there's a section on the quiz and a section on the test. The test will be after spring break, like Tuesday or Wednesday after spring break. We just didn't want to give you a test. Um, we'll give it to you on probably Wednesday. Yeah. Let me see if there's something important I need to know. Get the pass ready so I can look and see. Um, number five, which measure of center best describes the data with and without the outlier? Well, the mean was affected the most with the outlier, right? The median, just a little, um, without the outlier. So it's best describes the data in both cases. So without the outlier, you're going to choose the mean. With the outlier, you're going to choose the median. And that's what we've talked about, right? Okay, McKaylin, you can go now. So, on the next page, it says the prices of some athletic shoes are shown in the table. Identify the outlier in the data set. Who sees the outlier in the data set? Which one? What number do you think is the outlier in this set here? Yes. Yes, 78 and 95, $78.95 is the outlier. Now, determine how the outlier affects the mean, median, and mode. So, it, the mean... Determine how the outlier, the mean, it makes it larger, right? With an outlier, the mean is larger. Mean is larger. With the outlier, the median will be affected just a little bit. And if I take the outlier out, does it affect the mode? No effect. Do we even have, is there one number that, in fact, there isn't even, no mode. If you take it out, there's still no mode, so no effect. Okay, tell which measure of center best describes the data with and without the outlier. Okay, with the outlier, which one do we use, kids? With an outlier, do you use mean, median, or mode? With an outlier, median. Without the outlier, when you take it out, without outlier, you're going to use the mean. Okay? Any questions? All right, so what do I want you to do for your classwork slash homework? I want you to do on page 848, number one. Let's turn the page. On page 849, I want you to do number one, three, and number four. Wait, fill in the graphic organizer below. Yeah, 
you know what, in number three, think about what, when you answer number four, it's like part C of number three, okay? T tell which measure of center best describes the data with and without the outlier. Well, that's basically what you're going to write down right here, isn't it? There's, yeah, if you want to use this area here to help you out for number three, that's fine. So do on page 848, number one. We'll probably do that one together before class is over. And then on page 849, one, three, and number four, you can use it to help you put the answer for number three. Okay? And we'll have a quiz over this information tomorrow. Any questions? All right. Have a good day.